Welcome back to another Splatoon 3 related video. My previous videos have been very successful in gaining subscribers, views, and new viewers. It felt good to put in the work and dedication for these videos, so if you enjoy these types of videos, feel free to leave a like, recommendation, or even just a view on the video. It helps out a lot. Alright, that's enough of me talking, let's get into it. Now, instead of doing five things, I'm going to go all over the place without a specific order of what to expect for the Direct in February. It's a matter of time when Nintendo is going to release the date for the Direct, but when this video is released, it'll be towards the end of January or start of February. Now, for you newbies, Splatoon is a third person shooter where you play life or death paintball and you use your organs to regain it. Oh, and you're also a humanoid with no parents. That was very unnecessary. I'm sorry. But back to the Direct. Splatoon throughout the years have had Directs relatively close to their release dates showcasing the game off itself. For example, the Splatoon 1 Direct showed off everything, and I mean everything. Customizations, hero mode, battle modes, stages, shops, abilities, amiibo, splatfest, literally everything. Fast forward two years later, the Splatoon 2 Direct mimicked the Splatoon 1 Direct. This means it also showed off everything. And then we got a Salmon Run Direct. What did this mean? Nothing. I mean, it showed off an entirely different mode for the second game, which was flat out amazing, and I was hyped for it because it literally reminded me of COD BO2. It was a great incorporation to the Splatoon franchise, introducing Salmonids and a new character, Mr. Grizz. Similar to the other directs, they showcased everything to know about the new mode for Splatoon 2, and that brings us to Splatoon 3. So connecting the dots, previous directs purely focused on the entire game, which I don't think will happen this time, but they will pinpoint some things. Some things they might focus on are specials, weapons, animations, maps, little buddy, and hero mode. These are very loose and I could be entirely wrong, but these seem the most realistic as we have two trailers showing off each of these components, sort of. New Year's Day, we got a teaser of an Inkling boy twirling an ink brush as either a victory animation or a spawn animation. Cross out the spawn animation, we're literally floating on a coffee machine so it wouldn't make sense. Also charger players spawn below the coffee machines one handed so it wouldn't make sense for this to be a spawn animation which indeed makes this a victory animation. Other victory animations are yet to be revealed but we do have some spawn animations such as the roller animation, a very straightforward twirl and a serious face, a bow animation similar to the roller with the twirl and a straight face, a blaster animation which has no twirl but a straight face. A slosher animation which is so cool. The animation shows the player throwing down the slosher on the spawn and it bounces back up to them. A splatling animation that shows the player struggling to carry their own weapon. And lastly, the gun animation which is just lame. From the weapon classes in Splatoon 2, the two trailers have shown off 9 weapon classes technically. Brushes are guaranteed as well. This isn't to say all of the animations for the weapon classes are going to be the same, but I'm 90% sure these are the spawn animations for the weapon classes. Little Buddy is a Salmonid which we kill and take their eggs in Splatoon 2. So why would we inherit one as our pet? Yeah, I don't know either. But aside from that, this makes me personally think that Mr. Grizz was a bad guy or a bad bear all along. He had us work shifts that involved us killing Salmonids, as well as taking golden eggs from them, which is one, murder, and two, theft. But what do we Squid Kids and Octo Kids know? Nothing. But I hope to find out. Splatoon 3 is post-apocalyptic, so assuming everything is in place, Mr. Grizz's role will be revealed later on, either positively or negatively impacting the story and giving us some backstory on why we have a pet salmon. Maps. Previously mentioned in my 5 brief things I want in Splatoon 3 will clearly make an appearance in the direct, because Nintendo isn't just going to show us 3 maps, right? <laughs> right? I'll bet that Nintendo will show off 2 new maps. One being a returning map from either Splatoon 1 or Splatoon 2, and the second of course being a brand new map. There's not really much to say here other than they're going to reveal another map, and I would go on about hazards and whatnot, but let's be real, I ain't got time for that. Duelies, shooters, splatlings, snipers, brellas, rollers, brushes, sloshers, blasters, and bows. 10 weapon classes now in Splatoon 3. Not much to say rather than which weapons are returning. I'm not going to waste my time nor embarrass myself, but rather I say that new Squiffer, Octoshot, Berry Pro, and Wasabi return to Splatoon 3. Again, instead of wasting my time predicting what will come back and what won't, I simply ask for those as we play the waiting game to see which weapons come back and which disappear piece by piece. Very, very cool specials have been revealed in the two trailers, including Crab Tank, Zipcaster, Big Bubbler, 
Trizuka, and Killer Whale 5.1. Trizuka, Bubbler, and Killer Whale are all remix specials, though Zipcaster and Crab Tank are new specials to Splatoon 3. Zipcaster mimicking his Spider Man zip point, and Crab Tank mimicking a backing. You know those balls you used to pause, never mind. New features in any game obviously get shown off before their official release, so it'd be very pointless to show off a new special in a trailer and not give details on how it works. Relating back to earlier, weapons are unknown whether they're returning or whether they'll be forever remembered. Same thing with subs, sadly. Personally, I wish all weapons, subs, and specials could return to Splatoon 3, similar to Smash Ultimate's Everybody's Here campaign. But that won't happen. It just gives all of us more anticipation for the direct coming soon. Hero Mode. How can I say this? Nintendo has done an excellent job with story, level designing, villains, and gameplay. Despite how wacky the Splatoon storyline is, it fitted well throughout both games. I'm very thankful for some of the footage shown in the second trailer. There's no real way to describe the levels, but there is a way to describe how amazing the devs did. Throughout the years, we discover many agents, octolings, save zapfish, and so on and so forth. With the Splatoon 3 plot taking place after Chaos vs. Order Splatfest, Pearl and Marina are nowhere to be found in the two trailers. Callie is back to normal, Marie and Captain Cuttlefish are all featured in the story mode trailer. Now the big twist for this game is that mammals are introduced in the game as a form of Octum, and I'm not sure how to feel about this. Mammals mixed with sea creatures are just no. But that goes back to earlier, me talking about the wackiness of the Splatoon franchise. DJ Octavio broke out again, he's our villain once again. Or someone else, like Mr. Grizz. Maybe even both. Who knows? Some things we can expect to see are gameplay of one level, maybe even the first level, one boss fight, and either one scroll or an upgrade in the story mode, such as a weapon or a sub. These are what I'm hoping for at least, or at least one. Can't wait to see what they show off for Hero Mode specifically. Congrats, you watched my whole video, or you skipped to the end. But either way, thank you for taking the time to view this video. I really do enjoy making Splatoon 3 videos because it gives more hype for when the game eventually releases. I hope you all enjoyed this video and feel free to like and sub if you're new or returning, and I will see you all in the next video.